Hey, Sisteritas. Welcome back to the Sisterita Club. Jessica Jarris here. I'm really excited about today's video because you're gonna learn a little bit about me that you don't already know is I am an avid bookworm. I absolutely love to read. And so I wanted to do a little bit of a different video and give you Sisteritas some book recommendations. These are all Christian, nonfiction or fiction. And I kinda wanna walk through these with you, Sisteritas so that you can enjoy getting immersed in these books. I would so encourage you to read. It is absolutely amazing and sad how many times I hear from a friend or somebody that I know that literally just blatantly says, I don't like to read. And it just boggles my mind because it's so much fun. And a lot of times they'll say, well, I don't have time, but there is plenty of time. There's 24 hours in the day, we can all work it out so that we can read. And um, I don't have the Bible in this stack because that's a given. We should be reading the Bible daily. But these are some great books that you'll just really enjoy. So let me get into it and share with you what I've got. It, again, if you don't love to read, just pick up one of these books and start, and you're going to end up finding yourself in love with reading. And that's how you kind of become a bookworm. You just like read one book, you really like it, and then you read another book from that same author, or you get some more recommendations, and you just find yourself with a to-be-read pile. And the next thing you know, you are a reader. And the other thing that I wanted to share, too, about just reading and enjoying um, these books is you can always carve out some time, whether it's in the morning or in the evening on your lunch break. You can carve out some time. Take a bubble bath and enjoy reading, uh, but you will be enriched. So let's go ahead and get started. I will show you this book stack one by one. So this book is on my Kindle, and if you have, this is my paper white, and I love it. And I get a lot of the books by the Kindle Unlimited on Amazon or through my Libby app. And this book was recommended to me from a friend at church. This is by Mary Connolly. It's called Tried and True. It's the Wild at Heart book one. And this was actually rated as a 4.15 on Goodreads. I think the cover is so cute. But really what this book is about is this girl who you see on the cover here. It's like a historical fiction. Her name is Kylie Wilde, and she is the younger sister of two other girls. And they have all... Um, been focused on homesteading their land. Um, and it's basically, they all have a special exemption because they fought in the Civil War. And they were dressed up as men. And they didn't lie, per se, because nobody asked them if they were a man. And then, um, so she wants to sell her property and return back east. But of course, lo and behold, she's going to fall in love. And she's going to fall in love with a local land agent, Aaron Masterson, who knows her secret she isn't a boy, so is he okay with defrauding the government about her home extension or exemption? <laughs> Sorry, homesteading. Um, or is he going to convince her to marry him? So it's super cute. It's like a fluffy, light read, and I'm 30% in, and I'm already going to rate it like four or five stars when I'm done. And I'm going to try this author again. I really like it. It um, is only about 200 pages no, 300 pages, 329, something like that. So it's not like a really thick, heavy book. So this is a really good book. And check out your library because I'm sure um, that your library has Christian fiction novels, but also your church probably has a library that you can partake in. So um, this is the next book that I wanted to recommend. This is my favorite Nonfiction. So the other one was fiction. This is nonfiction. My favorite nonfiction Christian book. I'm drinking out of my cute Starbucks cup. All right. So this is by, this is a New York Times bestseller. It's by Stacey Eldridge. John is her husband. He wrote Wild at Heart, which by the way, I would recommend buying that for your husband, your son, nephew. Um, but in any event, this is essentially the woman's version of that of a, of a book so he wrote wild at heart and it's like the male's calling this is the woman's calling it's called captivating unveiling the mysteries of a woman's soul so the message of captivating is this all right your heart and i'll show you the sleeve your heart matters more than anything else in all of creation 
the desires you had as a little girl and the longings that you still feel are telling you of the life God created you to live. So he offers to rescue your heart and release you to live as a fully alive and feminine woman, a woman that is truly captivating. And I have gifted this book to, I don't even know how many ladies, like I've gifted it to every teen girl that I know, like from a, a friend who, her daughter, um, we were invited to a Quinta Sarah and I gifted it then. This actual copy I bought on thriftbooks.com. It's, it's a secondhand copy, but I'm gifting this to a friend in our life group, her daughter. And I'm going to have my daughter read it when she's of age. I'd say probably like 13 and up would be a good age. Not that there's anything content-wise that's not appropriate. It's just more or less for her to fully grasp and understand and appreciate the content. It's just such a great book. It's such a great read. If you are a grown woman or if you have a daughter... Either way, you would be really blessed by this, and it's a great, you know what, this would be a great high school graduation gift for a girl, and then you could give her like a little bracelet or a little handbag, but this is definitely, this could change her life. This could literally change her whole perspective of the Lord. Um, here's the ISBN number. So um, don't miss out on this. Like buy this, a gift it. It's, it would, it's just absolutely amazing. I can't sing its praises anymore, and I gave this five stars on Goodread. Like I said, it's one of my favorite books of all time. All right, so then we'll just go through the non-fiction. I wanted to share with you, Sister Rita's, about this book. This is called um, The Love Stories of the Bible Speak, and it's by Shannon Bream. I was really um, gravitated to the cover. I think it's really pretty. Um, you have really great uh, theologians and authors like Lee Strobel, Max uh, Lucado that give great recommendations to this book. Um, and then here's a little description of Shannon Bream. At Hobby Lobby, they have this in their little uh, book section, Christian fiction or nonfiction book section at the front of the, the store. Um, this is the book sleeve so that you can take a look at this. But essentially what this book is, it's nonfiction. It highlights love stories in the Bible. So uh, for example, I'll take you into the um, contents page. So you've got Song of, Song of Solomon's, Samuel and Delilah, Adam and Eve, Joseph and Mary, Esther and Xerxes, Ruth and Boaz, David and Abigail, which I love their love story, by the way. I named my daughter Abigail. You have, so then now you also have friendships. So you have David and Jonathan, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the friendship of Paul, Job and his friends, and Jesus and John. And then there's like a call to end the book at God's unconditional love for us. So I really do enjoy, I, I, I did enjoy this book. I read one chapter a day. And... I work from home, so what I would do is, and again, when we say we don't have time to read, we do have time to read. Sometimes I would be in a work call, it would end early, and I would just like read two or three pages before my next call. And that's how I kind of got through this book, I'd read a chapter a day. And um, it'll give you a synopsis of the love story, right? So like here you have Samson and Delilah, it'll give you the reference in the Bible, it kind of gives you a synopsis. So Bible verses, and then she'll tell you some stories and how that relates to you in your life. So I um, think that you would really be blessed by this, especially if you're new to the Bible and you're new to um, reading the word of the Lord. This will be a great um, book for you. For me, I found it, I wouldn't want to say boring. That's not the right way of saying it. But I think I kind of got a little, um, I don't know, uh, Bored is not the right way of saying it, but like I've read the Bible several times cover to cover. So the stories, I was looking for more out of those stories and I was getting a um, synopsis and then like, like one or two stories from her. And so I found it while I was reading it a chapter a day and I was enjoying it. I wasn't like riveted because it wasn't, I wasn't learning anything that I didn't already know if that's the case, but it was a nice refresher and I think somebody would be really blessed if they, were, like I said, if they were kind of getting into the stories of the Bible, this would be a really good book for you. So I wanted to recommend it because I think somebody could really enjoy this. All right, so then I wanted to highlight 
this book, which I have been talking about in some of my recent videos. This is by Timothy Keller, and it's on prayer, experiencing on intimacy with God. And this is actually, this was rated a 4.35 on Goodreads. And this is, this is really about how to make your prayers genuinely meaningful. So Tim Keller, he offers biblical guidance as well as specific prayers for certain situations, such as dealing with grief or loss, um, forgiveness. So he discusses ways to make each prayer more personable and powerful and how to establish a practice of prayer that works for each reader. So these are some of the um, chapters, uh, the topics that you can look. Encountering God, conversing with God, the greatness of prayer. So, and the reason why I really liked this was he gave a really great theological background and, um, and deep dived into the understanding of prayer. Um, it wasn't just like a synopsis of the Bible, a Bible verse, and then kind of him glossing over a story or two. He really delves in and re you really learn a lot. And you've heard me kind of quote a few of his um, excerpts in here on some of the prayer bit videos that I've posted recently. So um, this is definitely a book that you'll really want to pick up. All right, now let me share with you. You sister readers have heard me talking about Stormy Omarshian before. These are brand new copies. This one a friend gave to me and I've read through it all. But I love her. She's amazing. So um, she's just a, like a dynamic prayer warrior. So she, she has a whole series on prayer. So she has like the power of a praying husband, the power of a praying wife, the power of... Um, a praying uh, woman. She has uh, she has like tons of different books, different topics. Uh, yeah, prayer warrior. Um, the power of praying for your adult children. She has lots and lots of books. And so, what I love about her books is what she will do is she has a topic. So it could be. I'm trying to find the. Okay, so here you go. It could be power. Um, wife, work, finances, sexuality, like you pick a topic. So let's say his health. So you're praying, um, you're, you're the wife, so you're praying for your husband. So you go to health, page 97, and she'll talk about it, like why it's important to pray for his health. And she'll give a story in her life. And, um, and then she'll give Bible verses that back it up. And then she actually writes out a prayer that you can pray over. And so I love this. So these, and then she has the power tools, which are your Bible verses that relate to prayer on healing. So this is a great tool. I would highly recommend you, Sister Rita's, getting her books. You can find them in thrift stores a lot of times, um, like a Goodwill. But yes, pick up her books. They make great gifts as well. I love them. So couldn't speak high enough of these. Five stars all the way. I love her. She's the best. All right, now this is exciting. If any of you sister readers, this is fiction, are familiar or not with Karen Kingsbury, pick her up if you are just now getting into reading, if you want to. She has a whole series called The Baxter Family. You can pick up those essentially like standalone books, but they are so good. She's a New York Times bestselling author. This one is called Someone Like You. It's going to be my very next read, actually. I love hardback books. They're my absolute favorite. I got this on Amazon. Here's the ISBN number. But here's what's really exciting. They're making a movie off of this. So it's going to be in the theaters on April 2nd. So read the book and then go support her and um, take your friends and family to the theater. I'm just letting you see this. You can pause it and read it and go and see the, the movie. It's going to be so much fun. So this book, it's about this girl named Maddie West, and she was adopted as an embryo. So a stranger approaches her one day and tells her about the truth and tells her that she has a sister that she never knew about. So she gets all upset and is super hurt, and she moves over to moves to uh, Portland, Oregon to find herself, essentially. And then this guy named Dawson Gage, his life is destroyed when London Quinn, the only girl he's ever loved, was killed. So in the hospital room, his mom tells him that she may have had a sibling that was the other frozen embryo that she and her husband had donated. So how cool is that? And then so Dawson then invites Maddie to Portland to connect with her 
and she meets her like long lost relatives, the Quins, who are essentially her biological parents, and they welcome her into their lives. And she's just intrigued. She's intrigued by the, the memories. And here's the question. Is this the family that she was really meant to have? Is what she asks herself. So, um, and then now it will take the love of Dawson Gage to help Maddie find her way home. Oh, it's, it's such a unique story and I'm so excited. And our life group is all re reading this and we are going to go and watch the movie together. And you can see the science raises questions only love can answer in this moving and thought provoking novel. So you do not want to miss reading this. So that's amazing. And then here is the last book recommendation I wanted to give you, Sister Rita. This is by Francine Rivers. And she is a New York Times bestselling author. This is called The Masterpiece. It is such a good book. I gave it five stars on Goodreads. And um, she also wrote the book that you all probably are aware of. It's called Redeeming Love. I read Redeeming Love and I liked it. And I watched the movie. So that's another fun thing that you can do is read that book and watch the movie. I love those little combos. But I liked the masterpiece even better. So this was rated 4.29 on Goodreads. And first and foremost, I just, when they say don't judge a book by its cover, I would totally judge this. I think it's absolutely beautiful. And it's essentially about a girl that has a, like a, I don't want to say bad past. We all have a bad past at some point before we know Christ. She has, some, she has some struggles, right? She was like divorced. She has a son. And um, she ends up meeting this painter that he has also a past. And they end up having a relationship. And I don't want to give any spoiler alerts or anything like that. Um, but they have to find each other. And they have to find their relationship with the Lord. And they it's just a beautiful story. And um, again, I don't want to give anything away, but pick this book up. I actually found this book at Goodwill and it look how like perfect it looks. It looks brand spanky new and I got it. And then one time I was at Goodwill before I bought this copy for myself and would you not believe it, but there was a brand new spanking copy at Goodwill. It looked just this, this beautiful. And I have a friend that likes Francine Rivers and hadn't read this. I instantly picked it up and I wrapped it all pretty and um, I gifted it to her for her birthday with some flowers. And that was her gift from me. So um, this is a really good book. Here's the ISBN number. It's by Tyndale. Um, you won't want to miss this. So, so many fun book recommendations. We've got fiction, nonfiction, and, <coughs> excuse me, you sister readers, start reading. Read your Bible, but get into books. You'll enjoy them if you just read a chapter a day or if you just delve in and binge read like this masterpiece one that I did or the Karen Kingsbury, I know I will. You are just going to be blessed and um, and you'll have fun. You'll just absolutely have fun. Then I'll show you this cover real quick of Mary Connolly again, tried and true. And this is such a cute, fun book. It's like a guilty little pleasure and I don't have to feel guilty about reading it. But I mean, it's just not like a deep, deep, deep book like a Tim Keller perhaps. So... All right, Sister Rita's, I love you all. Enjoy. And um, my fellow bookworms, comment below. Let me know what you've read, what you're reading right now, what you would recommend. And I look forward to catching you all in the next video. Bye. Love you all. Bye.